or be unable to contrast equality of opportunity from equality of outcome. But you have learned that and so much more here, so much more than just definitions. The most important moments in your life as you head forward will be defined not by what you know, but how you think. What will you do when you're confronted by, with a problem that you haven't seen before? Will you shy away waiting for someone to show you what to do? Or will you be excited by the opportunity to figure it out on your own? Discovery is less about what you already know and more about how you respond to challenge. It is about being willing to ask the right questions to complete your own understanding. Over the last few years, you guys learned logic. You, you learned to identify contradictions and eliminate impossibilities, proceeding scientifically and methodically to arrive at solutions. You mastered the processes and tools of science that enables you to go from ignorance to understanding. You now have the skills to find objective truth and are able to communicate it to others with clarity and precision. We know we have asked a lot of you, a lot from you. We insisted that you pay attention when you were little, bitty, teeny, tiny um, preschoolers, when focusing was a challenge. You know, we insisted that you guys harness your concentration. We assigned difficult homework that may have taken much effort to complete, even if it was like a math box page in kindergarten. From the tender age of five or six, we expected you to figure out relationships on your own. We expected you to complete essay answers in your geography tests. And not only did you do all of that, you made that skill a habit. You mastered these skills. Soon, all the things that we asked of you became easy. You learned how to study and how to organize your work. You mastered respect and courtesy. You learned that being a challenger student was something special and something that you should be proud of. And you are now in a position to be unsatisfied with not understanding a concept, so much that some of you guys, when you move on to high school, may become restless and get the urge to ask questions when you see something that is illogical or incomplete. By this habit of making connections from mere facts, you are now prepared to approach any subject. As you move on from the safety and consistency of our environment, you will of course come across others that will not have had the same logic exposure or training. And that will be your chance to apply the values that you've, that you've been imparted here at Challenger. Graduates, do not be swayed by peer pressure into self-indulgence. Proceed with integrity, focusing on the ultimate purpose of your life, which is achieving happiness. Recall that happiness is not a destination. It is the byproduct of a life well lived. If you ask, yourself, if you ask yourself all along why we kept asking, questions and talking to you guys about honesty, productivity, self-reliance, rationality, you guys could probably, you know, just a answer any one of those things in a literature question and get some points, right? We didn't ask those things to be a broken record. We kept talking to you guys about those things because those are the necessary ingredients for a happy life. A life well lived rarely happens by accident. It requires active choice, and it is the result of setting and pursuing goals but not pursuing them at any cost. Achieving them, however, virtuously and through values. You guys are brilliant and with values, and we are extremely proud of you. As you move on, be sure to exercise your rights and ardently guard your liberty forever. Always keep your word. Treat others as you would want to be treated, and do not trespass or encroach on others or their property. Stay curious and hungry to learn. Remember that during your time at Challenger, you learned universal values, not just ideas that apply in the building. As you move on, remember everything that you have learned here and act always like a Challenger student. One more big round of applause, please, for all of our <laughs> At this time, I'd like to invite Nate Kerr to the podium, he will be presenting the Liberty Speech. I've been a challenger for as long as I can remember. I truthfully cannot believe I am up here graduating from the only school I've ever attended. It seems like just yesterday that I walked into school for the first day of eighth grade. From this school, I have learned many lessons that I carry on in my future. I learned many values in my time being here the most critical of which are rationality, justice, and the value of prioritization. As I move away from my life at Challenger, I realize I have so much experience that my fellow peers around the country do not share. 
This ultimately means that Challenger has set me up for success and to rise above the pattern. I've learned to become rational through the countless literature and history classes. I've learned that rationality involves recognizing and acting in the pursuit of long-term happiness. As I've gotten older, I've applied the ability to reason to my own life and will be able to apply rationality to my life in the future. Through logic class, I've gained the skills to be able to reason. I've also been able to increase the strength of both my verbal and written arguments. A simple example of this has been trying to find ways to do my homework. For most, of, for most the short term is more appealing than homework. There were times in which I had to bring my math book with me on trips to the ice rink or wake up early to finish a project. Often, I had to make the choice to sacrifice free time in order to finish work because I recognized my long-term goals were more important. I learned justice means getting only what is earned or deserved. I saw justice applied through getting what is earned in a test. My grades would reflect how I studied or paid attention in class. I also learned the value of doing the work early because I realized that without putting in anything, I wouldn't get anything out in return. When I grow up and get a job, I know the harder I work, the more I will experience opportunities. As some of you know, I play hockey. I have been traveling to many, I've been traveling to tournaments throughout the school. Being out of town increased the pressure that I have faced when projects were coming up. I had to quickly set my priorities early in the year in order to be successful. Although there are many hard and stressful times, I am forever grateful that I have so much practice prioritizing that I will definitely need as I further my education. Learning, understanding, and recognizing liberty was fundamental in my challenge for education. We were consistently being taught to be aware of our individual rights and to exercise our liberty as American citizens. I was able to understand what it truly means to be an individual living in a society. My education gave me an understanding of the job of the government and what they have the ability to do and not to do. Understanding liberty changed my life forever because there are so many people who do not even know or understand their rights. Being a challenger student and graduate, I know what I can do and I know not to let anyone take those liberties from me. I am incredibly grateful for how, for how truly caring my teachers have been. Many teachers have seen my potential and have done their best to help me reach it. I understand that in the future, I may not have such small classes and consequently may not have as many direct dialogues with my teachers. I learned all the values previously stated from my amazing teacher. Challenger values were incorporated early in nearly every lesson I had. Being able to learn and develop these values made me better in every way. I am forever grateful that I was able to have such an absolutely amazing experience and was able to attend such an outstanding school. I've learned so much from Challenger. Not only have I learned basic material, but I've also learned life lessons aside from the curriculum that I've been able to apply outside of my academic career and into my everyday life. I will truly miss everyone and everything about this school. It has truly been like a second home to me all these years. Thank you. introduce our middle school choir. Okay, come on up, you guys. <laughs> The reverse side is inscribed with the words knowledge, work, and responsibility. These values we have tried to instill in the hearts and minds of each graduate. I think we have succeeded. The silver is symbolic in that it becomes more valuable as time passes. Society places great value on silver, and while the value of other commodities may tarnish and diminish as time passes, the value of silver and the value of a quality education do not. With Mr. Ashley's help, we will now present a silver coin to each of our graduates.
Justin Aiken. Rachel Foreman, Ambika Gandotra, Daphne Gregory, Isabella Haddad. Nathan Kerr, Pranesh Mandal, Stephanie Maziak, Olivia O. Leah Hanenek, Maya Santa, <laughs> Zayan. Anya Thacker, hey, Anya. and Taya Thurgood. you had. You may have acknowledged at the time that it would require hard work, sacrifice, toil, tears, and frustration, but you accepted the challenge. Challenger's advanced curriculum comes at a price that you were willing to pay because you recognize the worth of the learning and development that takes place here. Two years ago, when my brother graduated from Challenger, my mother carefully crafted a fake money lay that closely represented how much money was spent on his Challenger education from preschool to eighth grade. It is a visual reminder of all the sacrifices our parents have made for our superior schooling. Today, we graduates recognize and thank you for all you've done to support us on our journey. Eighth grade graduate Rachel Foreman is touched by her parents willingness to stay up with her helping with various projects. Leah Pranenik will always remember her parents helping her study for tests in elementary school. Nathan Kerr appreciates that his parents sacrificed getting a new car for his challenger education. Anya Thacker acknowledges that her parents have sacrificed so much time and energy making sure she is kept up in her schoolwork. Ambika sees all her parents invest towards tuition and uniforms in time for parent-teacher conferences, evening for parents, programs, merit assemblies, graduations, rides to and from school, 
and assisting the student store errands. These are just a few examples among the many that our graduating class recognizes. You have done so much for our education, and this has set us on a better path for the future. You are the hardworking example we strive to become. You are there every step of the way, encouraging us, motivating us, strengthening us, and pushing us to be our best. Without your positive influence in our lives, we wouldn't be who we are. We have only come so far because you are willing to spend your time, money, and energy giving us the best of everything. I am not the only one here who's seen her parents and been inspired just to be just like them, to work just as hard and be just as dedicated, to sacrifice just as much for their kids. Attached to the money way my brother received at graduation was a note that read, the cost of your schooling is only a portion of the value of your education. Because of you, we can take this incredible academic experience and continue to build upon a great foundation. And that is truly priceless. In large part, because of your sacrifice and support, we are here today celebrating our academic achievements. This was possible only because of you. Just as you held us so tenderly in your arms 14 years ago, today, as you give us a congratulatory hug, please know that you, your love and sacrifice truly means the world to us. Thank you. special award that we present each year to those students who have been with Challenger since their kindergarten year. And this year we recognize several students who have been with us their entire academic lives. We appreciate the hard work and accomplishments that we have witnessed from these lifetime students over the years. And we also thank you, the parents, um, for the many years of support that you've given to Challenger. Um, at this time, we'd like to go ahead and present those awards. Justin? is recognized for his or her outstanding academic achievement in pursuit of academic excellence. The valedictorian is determined by looking at student performances over their years in middle school. And this year, we are proud to present to you an outstanding student that truly encompasses the essence of a challenger student. She will receive a gold coin, symbolizing that which society monetarily values above all, gold. Um, I am privileged to introduce to you the valedictorian of the Lone Mountain 2022 graduating class, Rachel Foreman.
Success doesn't rush. The greatest reward is the journey. Jeff Moore. Welcome families, friends, <coughs> students, staff, and fellow graduates to the 2022 Challenger Graduation Ceremony. Today, we celebrate not only our success, but also the long and worthwhile journey that we took to arrive here. We celebrate our parents for their sacrifices and our teachers for guiding us to this point and never giving up on us. Today, we celebrate the start of a new journey to high school. My fellow graduates, during our years at Challenger, we have learned a lot. Mr. Ashley taught us how to use geometry to construct an angle bisector and then prove that it is an angle bisector. Mrs. Sue taught us how to speak and write eloquently. Mrs. Zervos taught us about our natural rights and the laws of justice. Mr. Pruitt taught us to always be kind and supportive to others. All of this knowledge will no doubt be useful as we continue in life, but in addition to the lessons written by the curriculum, our beloved teachers will be leaving us with many important life lessons, including how to work with a team, how to respect our own and others' rights, to always be kind and supportive, and that success only comes from persistence and learning from failures. It is such an honor to be delivering this valedictorian speech, but I would not be standing in front of you today if it weren't for all the amazing people who have impacted my life. I've had so many outstanding teachers throughout my Challenger career. I want to thank all of you, from preschool to especially middle school, for helping me to become the person that I am today. To Mrs. Sue, it was such an honor to be part of your very first Challenger class in fourth grade and to be taught by, taught by you for the last three years. You have helped me hone my writing skills it did not, and did not give up on me, no matter how many Dorito-powered Dorito rockets never left the ground. <laughs> to Mr. Ashley, Thank you for all of the energy and enthusiasm you spent on this class. Your classes were not only easy to follow and interesting, but also fun and entertaining. And for math and science, that is no small feat. No matter how you were feeling, you always had a smile to give. In sixth grade, Mrs. Zervos asked all of us to write our biggest fear on a whiteboard. I assumed she meant fears pertaining to school, so I wrote public speaking. Without Ms. Servos' guidance over the past year, I would be shaking in my boots right now. <laughs> to Mr. Pruitt, thank you for all of your jokes that always brighten up a lesson. And thank you for always letting us be entirely ourselves in your class. Mrs. Danielson, some of us were taught, for, taught by you for three years in a row, some for two in a row, and some for one, but I only had you in seventh grade. Even so, thank you for being as much a friend as a teacher. Mrs. Talavera, thank you for guiding us, your logo, all the way to Python. I'll never forget how much fun our class had playing your creative games that also apply to our programming knowledge. Mr. Harleen, thank you for all the inspirational speeches. You gave us the best advice. Even for the short time that Mr. Beers was our teacher, he filled that time with so many laughs and memories. I want to mention the many art teachers we've had in the last two years and how unique and skilled they each were in their own ways. Thank you to Mrs. Christensen and Mrs. Conway for teaching me to truly appreciate the art of music. Thank you to Mr. Thurgood, Mr. Hoffman, and Ms. Katie for allowing us to take a break from the heavier subjects and just have fun. Most of all, I want to thank my family for all the sacrifices they made for me and always motivating me to do my best. I want to thank my dad for always letting me come to him with questions or for advice and for him always having a helpful answer. I want to thank my mom for always encouraging me when I felt overwhelmed and being there for me. I would like to thank my sister, Nicole, for staying up late with me all those nights doing homework and for making sure that I still have fun while trying to achieve my goals. 
Thank you guys for sharing all the tears, the laughs, and the memories. I am so grateful to have attended Challenger and receive the education that I did. Not only did I learn valuable information, but Challenger also taught me how to learn. The life lessons I have learned from Challenger will continue to help me throughout my life, not just in high school. Challenger has pushed us to our limits with assignments and packed our brains full of information, but it will only benefit us for the rest of our lives. Unlike past graduates, we are among the few classes that face an even greater challenge, attending Challenger School during the pandemic. We were fortunate enough to stay in school, but we missed out on so many experiences, such as the Washington DC trip. Nevertheless, our experiences allowed us to make other unique memories. Short periods of online school, classroom lunches, and meeting so many new teachers. Even though our lives at Challenger are coming to an end, our new lives in high school are about to begin. The future is daunting, but we must meet it with excitement and determination. The future is so bright for all of you. The future is Something unpredictable, but in the end, it's right. Graduating class of 2022, I hope you had the time of your life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel. That was lovely. At this time, I'd like to invite our middle school teachers um, who will present um, some you know, personal reflections about each student and go ahead and distribute diplomas. Please allow me to introduce Mr. Pruitt. caring, and this year's student council president. Taysoff is admired among his peers. He worked extremely hard to earn the vote of his fellow students, and his campaign strategy worked to perfection. He has been developing his leadership skills with his work in student council, and the lessons he has learned from the tasks he has accomplished truly show. His fellow students often lean on him when they are feeling frustrated, and he always finds a way to lighten their mood with a compassionate smile. He is never one to choose sides. Instead, he finds a diplomatic solution to resolve problems. He is truly a gem, and we all know his value. <laughs> creative, outgoing, and filled with self-confidence. Daphne is a student that encompasses these traits, and it is clear the instant you have a conversation with her. Daphne's greatest strength is her passion. This passion can get her into trouble at times, though, especially during car line, when I constantly ask her to whisper. <laughs> Watching when she is academically pa passionate is incredible though. Daphne was extremely passionate about her position in the student store for economics. She used every chance she had to work and improve the store she worked for. I observed as she showed initiative, self-motivation, and leadership skills. You have shown every day that you're an amazing person and one of the most passionate students I have had the pleasure of teaching. Congratulations on this accomplishment. Pranesh 
has a personality that is unparalleled. <laughs> he is extremely self-confident and this is both personality and shyness. Watching the new friendships develop with Pranesh highlights his ability to quickly adapt to new situations. He is distinctive and has the ability to make others laugh without saying a word. <laughs> Though Pranesh is new to Las Vegas, he has created lifelong friendships with his charm and comedic attitude. A couple weeks ago, Pranesh came to me during car line to discuss a grammar topic, and I have never laughed as hard with a student than I did with Pranesh. Your unique perspective and mindset have been an excellent addition to this year's graduating class. I had the pleasure of getting to know Sarah from her extended car line stays, and the rapport we built is unmatched. Her witty personality and clever sarcasm will leave lifelong memories with me. The fun times filled with laughter during Carline will truly be missed. But most know Sarah for her academic career. Thus far, it has been exceptional. The expectations she sets for herself are hard to meet, but she studies very hard and always meets them. Sarah is not satisfied with just any grade. She seeks perfection. Anything less than 97% is unacceptable for Sarah. <laughs> Holding herself accountable to meet extreme expectations is a habit that many do not have. You work so hard and push your abilities to not just succeed, but excel in each academic area. I would be lucky to teach another student with half your grit and determination. Standing in front of students for hours, you start to notice quirks that some of them have. Olivia, <laughs> Olivia tends to constantly think in her head, and you can see it on her face. At times, she'll get an idea and randomly do a little dance in her seat. I credit this quirk to her artistic abilities. In Olivia's free time, she is either reading or searching the room to find something to draw. Once she finds something to draw, she will do another little dance in her seat, and the passion that lights her face while she is drawing is unmistakable. Some spend their entire lives looking for something they are passionate about, and Olivia found hers early and continuously works at it to improve. She has completed a difficult task in earning her diploma and the Las Vegas Academy of Arts is lucky to have a student like you next year. <laughs> Taya is one of the most determined individuals I have ever met. Her motivation to accomplish goals she has set for herself is unmatched. She gives complete effort in every task and at times will stress herself out, but she will always come back the next morning with a smile on her face and a boisterous good morning. The standards she sets for herself based on her personal values and the challenger values she adapts will lead her to an extremely successful future. In the beginning of the school year, Taya started telling me fun facts, and after a few days, she asked to share a fun fact. I replied in my typical sarcastic tone, as long as it's fun. She was upset, and she did not want to tell me her fun fact that day. <laughs> the next day comes, and of course, the boisterous good morning, and then she walks to the podium and puts a stack of papers on it. She spent hours the night before compiling around 200 fun facts to prove she had facts that were indeed fun. <laughs> this is the effort that Taya puts into everything she sets out to complete. I have seen it in acts such as this, as well as in the work she produces. I've witnessed your work, 
and I witness, I witness you work hard, extremely hard every day to achieve this accomplishment, and you deserve the highest praise. You have set an amazing example for your fellow students. Congratulations. <laughs> cannot be measured against their peers because they are in a class all their own. What each of these students has accomplished is beyond what many will ever be challenged to do academically. And there is one young lady who should feel an incredible sense of pride for her achievements, Leia. sixth grade, she immediately became an asset to myself and her classmates. As others struggled to learn to take notes independently, Leia had already mastered the art. To my benefit, she was always willing to let me use her work as an example of my high expectations that Leia had already met. Many times throughout those first months, Leia found herself the center of attention as I passed around copies of her notes or shared her written answers to aid my lessons. I suppose I owe you a thank you. So thank you, Leah, for demonstrating independence, being an excellent role model, and for being my assistant. Leah excels in all areas of academics, and I think I speak for all of us when I say what a pleasure it has been to teach you. Leah also continues to impress us with her musical talent on the piano, her natural talent for acting, and her leadership as a prominent member of our student council. Leah, it has truly been a joy to know you, and finding underneath your serious exterior such an independent, confident, and funny young woman. Thank you for embracing a good value system, for working so hard at everything you do, and for just always being consistent and unwavering with you. Congratulations. sitting before you are smart. They can diagram, solve geometric proofs, and explain the history of the world. But they don't all possess the independence and possess passion that I have witnessed in Maya. <laughs> Maya is a quiet force to be reckoned with. And never was this more evident than with her persuasive speech she wrote this year. Maya tackled the difficult topic of the FDA's regulation on insulin. She chose this topic not only because she recognizes that government intervention often results in unfavorable outcomes, but because it matters to her. It matters to her family. I have known the Sanchez family for a long time. And I have thoroughly enjoyed watching Maya evolve from the little sister adored by her older brothers to fulfilling the role of big sister, to the independent young woman standing before you. Maya's devotion to family is just one of her admirable traits. I love watching Maya work through a math problem or think out loud to find an answer to a history question. She remains unfrazzled and has a unique ability to find her own errors and self-correct. Maya's not afraid to challenge you and she recognizes when others fail to do as they have agreed. She holds herself to a high standard and rightfully holds others to that standard as well. Maya, this is a unique trait, and I hope you continue to hold yourself to high expectations because you are capable of great things. And I have no doubt you will achieve all you set out to do. It has been my great pleasure to watch you grow into the beautiful and independent woman you see standing here tonight. Congratulations. meeting Rachel in my sixth grade history class. It's evident that she feared public speaking, apparently. But 
It was also evident that she was a mature, mature young woman and she meant business. I think she was determined to be standing here tonight as your valedictorian the moment she set foot in that middle school hall. Over the past three years, I have never seen Rachel falter in her mission to succeed and be consistently impressive. Rachel is always present, ready, and prepared. She makes our jobs very easy. She was CEO of an economic store, speech festival winner, math bowl finalist, a leader on the soccer field, and our highest academic performer. Rachel Foreman is the perfect student. But Rachel is more than the sum of her academic, athletic, and entrepreneurial accomplishments. Rachel is the quiet voice of reason amid the sometimes threatening pressure, propaganda, and pop culture that young people face. Integrity, one of Challenger's core values, is defined as consistency or wholeness in applying life-enhancing values. While Rachel embodies all of our values, it is her integrity that I admire most. Rachel has never wavered in her principles or her beliefs. Rachel, it is not easy to be a person who stands on principle. It is a quality most individuals, young and old, lack. You, however, are one of the rare individuals who can claim this attribute. I believe your integrity will enhance the lives of those you encounter and contribute to your long-term happiness. I am incredibly proud of the brave young girl I met in sixth grade and the remarkable young woman you are today. One more round of applause for our valedictorian. and loyal with just the right amount of spunk. That's our Adelaide. <laughs> she competes with the best of them academically, but her intelligence extends beyond the classroom. Adelaide has a worldliness that few 14-year-olds possess. She has a passion for justice and the recognition of rights for all. She is fiercely loyal to her friends but also perfectly content in her own world. She loves musicals, literature, and Shakespeare. She truly shines in history, drama, and literature because she understands the world in a way few teenagers do. Thank you for always adding valuable content to our class discussions and for always being respectful to me and your classmates. Adelaide demonstrated remarkable leadership in helping choreograph and, choreograph and direct our spring program while also giving a phenomenal performance as dogs. I owe a lot of the success of that program to you. Addie, you have a profound impact on those around you, and I am confident you will change the world. We thank you for letting us be a part of yours these past few years. It has been a genuine pleasure to know and teach you, and I wish you all the best on your next adventure. Good evening. Uh, Nate, why don't you come on up over here? All right, well, there are a few things that come to mind when I think of Nate. Great at hockey. Nate is confident and might seem simple, but is the type of kid who always looks you in the eye when you speak to him. A genuinely good and happy kid. A kid whose parents would be, and I'm sure are, proud of him. But in particular, when I think about my time in class with Nate, I think about how much of a natural Nate was and is at one of the key parts of a challenger education to think for yourself. A common refrain in my classes this year is a quote from Henry Ford, which goes, thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably why so few engage in it. As these students have learned, what many, people, what many people call thinking is often just using logical fallacies or propaganda to confirm what they already want to believe. But Nate would always be doing what we're all supposed to do when presented with the claim and just simply ask for the evidence. Ask why 
he should believe the things he's being taught or if there's a better way to solve a problem. Nate, always keep that spirit alive in you. Don't give in to the forces in the world and even within you that may push you to give in to formulaic, dogmatic, lazy thinking at times. Some of the first words you probably learned about liberty are now words that you live by and embody, as evidenced by your remarks earlier, that you were born with the right to choose your own destiny. You do think for yourself, you do speak for yourself, and you are responsible for yourself. I can't think of any student who has been more successful in this regard than you, and for this, along with all the commendable qualities you possess, I'm proud to congratulate you on your well-earned graduation from Challenger School. Did uh, Zion make it? <laughs> Zion! <laughs> Zion and I actually have quite a bit in common. We're both tall. Uh, we don't necessarily seem like people who you'd expect to play the piano, but we can. And of course, who would notice? Incredible hair. <laughs> Another more relevant similarity is we both tend to be easygoing and laid back people, which like all personality traits can be a blessing or a curse. Being easygoing, Zion excels in pressure situations and never seems phased at all in the moment. I think that's because people with that type of personality tend to be excited about the potential of success more than they are worried about the possibility of failure. And in this way, we tend to be optimists. And I know from my time in class with Zion, that he's very ambitious and looking forward to a bright and successful future. Sometimes though, the flow of life is not always friendly and going with the flow doesn't naturally always lead you to that future. And Zion, I encourage you to remember that while you maintain that core essential Zionness of being effortlessly cool and confident, to also stand strong, stay iron like lion as the song goes. Uh, when life tries to take advantage of your kind heart and easygoing nature and push you in a direction you don't necessarily want to go. In your years here, you've already been practicing walking this line successfully. As you, to paraphrase, to paraphrase one of my favorite parts of the Challenger mission, have embraced challenge, found joy, and built self-worth through your achievements. And now Zion, the next step awaits. And like you, I'm excited and optimistic for that bright future. Congratulations. Uh, I first had Bea Senidosa as a student in fifth grade. where I got the impression that they was pretty serious about school, but definitely very serious about her social life. Which is of course important too. I know that my daughter, who is a grade younger than Bea, told me that Bea is one of her favorite people to talk to and hang out with at an extended time and lunch because she's, quote, funny and fun to talk to. And there's no underestimating how valuable it can be to be a person who is funny and fun to talk to. When I had Bea in class again in seventh grade, I was impressed how she'd become a serious student as well, asking questions and working hard. As I watched the talent show the other day, I was reminded of one of my earliest memories of Bea that might be the most fitting to refer to, where she got up and confidently sang a song from the movie Moana, which is of course a big hit because it has one of those classy, catchy melodies classic catchy melodies, but at its core is really about the heroic journey and how the hero crosses the threshold between the known familiar world and the unknown world full of potential and mystery, cherishing where you come from on the one hand, but knowing you can no longer stay where you are and it's time for a new adventure. As the song goes, do I sing it? <laughs> See the line where the stars, where the sky meets the sea, it calls me, and no one knows how far it goes. If the wind in my sail and the sea stays behind me, one day I'll know how far I'll go. 
I don't think I need to belabor the metaphor any further, but yet you and your classmates are obviously crossing a threshold tonight, going beyond the familiar world of Challenger, which you've been a part of most of your life, and towards a new beginning, which is probably both exciting and maybe a little daunting. Please remember as you take that step and throughout your life that you can draw real strength from the foundation and values that are a part of who you are as a Challenger graduate. I'm so grateful for the years I've gotten to spend with you here, and I offer my very best wishes to you as you move on in your adventure. Congratulations. I had a football coach who once told our team that most people tend to gravitate towards the lowest standard to which they are held. And at the time he was explaining why he had increased the number of wind sprints he was having us run by a factor of, by my count, like 600%. <laughs> which of course I didn't enjoy at the time, but we did improve. And I do think that what he said was true. And I'm sure that's one reason we all appreciate the high standard of excellence expected at Challenger School. But I've noticed that for some exceptional few people, they will push far beyond that standard, and the only standard acceptable to them is their very best, and then maybe a little more. Anya Thacker is one of those people. In the time I spent with Anya in class, I don't recall a single assignment, project, or presentation where you ever seemed to go through the motions. And whatever you did, you try to find ways to do it better and were never satisfied with something that would satisfy most others. And since it seems to be in your nature to do things that way, you may be surprised to find out as you go out there that in that sense, you are not normal. <laughs> and of course I mean that in the best way. Because of that rare quality, I think you will find that there will be very few limits in what you might accomplish in your life. For this is a hallmark of entrepreneurs and innovators, people who not only find great success for themselves, but brighten the world around them, and so the rest of us are all the better off for it too. Anya, I'm so proud to have played a role in your education, and I'm very excited to see what the future does hold for you. Congratulations. <laughs> As a teacher, one of my most effective tools is the metaphor. Whether I'm comparing the flow of electricity in a wire to the flow of water in a pipe, or solving a two-step equation to taking off a shoe before removing a sack. Perfect metaphor allows me to form that all-important connection between the familiar and the unknown. So what is the perfect metaphor for teaching? I've heard teachers compared to everything from sculptors, to gardeners, to zookeepers, but do those metaphors truly capture the essence of my role here at Challenger School? Are your children anonymous masses of clay in need of my molding? Delicate saplings in need of some high quality itch to them? Do your children behave like wild animals in need of a tranquilizer dart in a caged habitat? I view my students as tourists in the wilderness of life and I view myself as nothing more than their faithful, experienced, and adoring tour guide, yeah. Justin. <laughs> Justin, you have traversed much of this wilderness trail with me, your guide, leading the way, pointing out all those fascinating features. Whoa, check it out, there's a right triangle rotated in the space about this hypotenuse. <laughs> as well as its treacherous potential pitfalls. Is that the opposite of two squared or the opposite of two squared? The trail has been rocky at times and uphill all the way. And sometimes I've had to wrangle you back to the group on multiple occasions and deter you from taking misleading shortcuts. But Justin, you persisted. Always polite, always friendly, and so helpful to me, and have developed the wherewithal to guide yourself to success. 
I'll never forget the many fun times we shared in summer school sessions or how proud we both were when you scored a 96 on one of the toughest geometry tests of the year. Justin, you have proven to yourself, to your family, and to me that you're more than capable of excellence when you apply yourself. So apply yourself. Keep exploring, Justin. Remain curious. Don't rely on past momentum to propel you along. Remember, one can never coast uphill. Continue to strive for mastery as you preserve the principles we have practiced together. Stay on the trail of knowledge, Justin, and you will discover happiness. Congratulations, Justin Mitchell. Sometimes a person's absence can be felt just as much as her presence. Such was the case with Ambikanak and Dodgeman. I met Ambika in the fall of 2019 when I was her sixth grade teacher. Ambika, I remember spending arrival time with you and your peers as we played games, rotating element of destiny, Tom Swifties, rhyming pairs, anagram challenges. Seemed as though you could not get enough of these challenges and puzzles and games, which is such a great quality to have as a challenger student. I found myself inventing new games and activities just to keep up with your demand. In class, you were a stalwart scholar with impeccable comportment and a drive to perform at your absolute highest level. I knew that if you were struggling to understand a concept, then I probably didn't explain it well enough. There are times when you were disappointed in yourself or you felt that you had underperformed, yet you persevered, you fought through those rough patches, you willed your way to a successful outcome. We had developed a very strong core Having made great strides, and then in the March of uh, 2020, everything stopped. My classroom that had been filled with bustling activity and enthusiastic laughter was suddenly silent and bereft of life. As I drove the empty streets to an empty campus to film video lessons, I actually thought of you and your classmates, and how abruptly all of our lives had changed. I wondered if we would ever return to our normal, wonderful routine again. I spent the next year filming math videos, and while I was able to see your classmates passing in the hall, I, I never saw you. I was sad to think that I had not been able to say goodbye. Everything felt so unresolved. So this year, when I resumed teaching in the classroom, I was so elated to read the familiar names of my eighth grade roster, and among those names was yours. I was thrilled to get a chance to see you again, to catch up with you and your peers, and to teach you geometry. Now, as I stand here today, I must tell you how appreciative I am of our time together, and that it will have the completion of such a happy ending. I'm so proud of all that you've accomplished. Teaching you has been a pure delight, and I will forever treasure the moments we have shared together. You've been an exceptional student, a quality person, and I have no doubt that yours will be a very bright future indeed. Congratulations, and the guy. Believe it or not, some students are not as enthralled about geometry class as I am. In fact, there are times when I'm tempted to poke them with a stick to ensure that they are in fact still living. It is a challenge at times to convey the utter awesomeness of a subject that can be so abstract. Yet it is precisely in those times when the workload is dense, when deadlines are converging, and the teacher is saying something like, when a secant segment and a tangent segment are joined to a circle from a common exterior point, the product of the secant segment's length and the length of its external segment is equal to the square of the tangent segment's length. That students like Isabella Haddad demonstrate their method. Isabella's eyes remain not only open and pointed in the same direction, but also intently fixated on me and my colorful and often complex diagrams. Naturally, I assumed, this girl loves geometry. Her homework and assessments demonstrated a proficiency that was nothing short of impressive. 
It must be easy for her to perform at such a high level, I thought, because she loves geometry so much, I surmised. Isabella will tell you, geometry assignments can be immense, oftentimes labor-intensive, certainly challenging. I remember telling my students one day, hey, even if you're unable to complete an exercise, I want to see the evidence of your struggle. Your paper should look like a battlefield. Erasure marks, heck, tear stains. I don't want to see a pristine page indicating your immediate surrender. Give me a problem, I'll instantly quit. Those aren't just lyrics to our anthem here. In that moment, Isabella, you told me, you know, sometimes I cry doing geometry on work. I'm thinking, tears of joy, right? No, you told me that sometimes the exercises brought you to tears. I was shocked. I had no idea. To look at your immaculate homework assignments, to see you in class so engaged, so confident, so focused, I had assumed that it was all so effortless and painless for you. That incident reminded me of the proverbial duck, the one whose calmness on the surface does not belie the thrashing wet feet underneath. Thank you, Isabella, for reminding me that each of us can, through sheer willpower and mental fortitude, actually become what we project outwardly to the world, despite any uncertainty that we may be feeling inside. That's actually a pretty good description of my years as a fledgling teacher. Isabella, I now realize how hard you fought for the A that you earned in my class, and you did earn it. Maybe you were not always fascinated by what I was teaching, but you certainly performed like you were. Your success will breed confidence, which will in turn breed success, and so on and so on, as you continue to master that which you may have initially feared. Keep learning and growing, Isabella, and as you do, keep inspiring others like me along the way. Go boldly in the direction of your dreams, with passion and compassion, and above all else, have a happy life. Congratulations, Isabel. An apocryphal story goes something like this. There once was a professor notorious for his fast-paced lectures and long-winded explanations. He insisted that diligent note-taking and punctual attendance were essential for success in his course. That's why while grading the final exams, he was shocked to see that a student who had only attended a single class, his introductory lecture, had scored the highest mark overall, a 97%. Confused, the professor wrote, see me on the cover of the student's test. Later, when the student arrived at his office, the professor said, I must know. How on earth did you manage to get a 97 on that exam? And the student answered, well, I would have scored 100, but I went to your first class and I got confused. <laughs> Pause for laughter. We are all hardwired differently. Michael Phelps has a wingspan of 80 inches and size 14 feet that can bend 15 degrees farther than most swimmers. Effectively, his feet are flippers. Michael Phelps was born to swim. The body of American author and ultra-marathonist Dean Karnazes does not produce lactic acid which allows him to run indefinitely without tiring. He once ran 350 miles without stopping, eating, or sleeping. Sorry, Springsteen. Dean Karnazes was born to run. <laughs> Stephanie Nasiak is a natural-born thinker. It's true. I love teaching geometry because it is as much math as it is logic, and without fail, every year I'm able to learn something new from my students, a more direct route to an answer, a more elegant approach to a proof. Stephanie, you were among those students, and I had many this year, who were able to contribute to my class in such a way. Often while others do diagrams, scrawling equations to set up a problem, you would remain still, absorbing the content and simply thinking, what is the best way to arrive at the answer? Stephanie, while your mind is hardwired for abstract thinking, so much of what you will go on to accomplish in life will be the result of coupling that innate ability with good old-fashioned work. For Michael Phelps did not just show up to the Olympics, he swam 80,000 meters every week. Dean Karnazes still runs 40 to 50 miles per day. Stephanie, it has been a joy to be your teacher. 
to talk shop with you and your classmates about geometry and logic, to provide you with food for thought and to see your amazing mind in action. Use diligence and industry to fuel your progress and there will be no limits to how far your dreams will take you. Congratulations, Stephanie. Thank you so much to all of our middle school teachers. Those were amazing remarks and very heartfelt. Before we go ahead and close our ceremony today, I'd like to go ahead and welcome our middle school choir once more up to the stage. They'll be performing a wonderful world. <laughs> Thank you again for being a part of this amazing opportunity of educating your children. Thank you guys.
Dude, back you at it, you. bro. <laughs> We're the best. <laughs>
I'm the video guy that she does. Thank you. So there's Challenger in the rear view. Bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. I'll see him tomorrow. Say bye to Gashir.